Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday. And in this uh, sort of the last few videos, what we've been taking a look at is how to use use effect and specifically how to control when it runs. Um, and we do that by the second parameter here by passing in an array of variables we should watch for whenever they change. Basically, whenever they change, it reruns uh, the effect function here. But whenever this variable changes, the previous effect, or say this uh, component here gets unmounted, it runs the function that we can return from our effect function. So what we started playing around with is, well, what happens if it unmounts before our Ajax call has had a chance to, um, to, to uh, finish the promise? So we're awaiting this Axios call here, but there's a chance that this whole this whole component gets unmounted before it, the promise um, finishes. So what we did is we set up a variable here called let mounted equals true that we toggle over to false when our effect um, cleanup code runs, meaning either this variable changed or it's been unmounted. And what that allows us to do is before we try to call this uh, set data, uh, set state call here, we just check, is this code still mounted? so that we don't try to set the state on an unmounted component. So this is v, uh, v1, I guess you could say. V2 is we took this code and instead of just having a variable that kept track of whether the, whether, uh, the component was sort of still valid, whether it is still mounted, we switched to using Axios um, cancel token so that what we can actually do is cancel the, the entire Ajax call um, if the cleanup uh, function of our effect gets run. So I thought in this video we'd start with this Axios call uh, which already works and it already cancels the request and we can actually take a look at that by inspecting the code looking at the network and if we come here um, you'll see that this Ajax call here was cancelled and the way we triggered this was back here in our app so this is the parent that's calling it We've got this uh, set timeout code that runs 500 milliseconds, which toggles a mounted uh, state variable over to false. And what that does is control whether it will be rendering our Axios cancel component or not. So after 500 milliseconds, this will now be false, which means it will unmount this code, which triggers the cleanup function, which cancels the Axios call. Um, don't worry, we're going to go over this all again because what we're going to do is do the same thing now with fetch. So we'll start up and we'll call it fetch cancel. And we can just actually copy over all of the code so we have something to start from. And now that we've got fetch cancel, now that we've got this, let's go over to our app. Let's import it fetch cancel and let's add it here inside of this same little block of code. So this is fetch cancel and we'll just switch up the fake API it's hitting so that it's a little bit different. Okay, so it's doing the same thing now. You can see now we've got the two requests that are being canceled but that's still using Axios. So let's switch that over to use fetch instead. So we start off, we don't need um, Axios. And the first thing we can do inside of our effect is uh, instead of a source, which is how you handle um, Axios cancel token dot source, instead of this, in fetch, what you use is something called an abort controller. So we will say let controller equals new abort controller. And we'll use this abort controller to basically send a signal to our fetch call uh, when we want it to cancel the Ajax request. So we can now come into our uh, load data function, which just gets called right away. Uh, why do we have this in a separate function? Because you can't make, um, A, we need it something inside of this, uh, this effect function because we want the ability to have a controller and whatnot, but it's be the real reason is because you can't have your um, effect function being an async await function. Uh, and that's because you need the ability to return the cleanup function. 
So anyways, all that to say we have this tiny function in here, which is an async function that we call right away. So what we're going to do is clean up this code and we'll just keep it here and we're going to switch it over to fetch. So we'll say uh, const response equals await our fetch call to the URL. And what we do is we pass in here as our options um, something called the signal. So this comes from the controller. So controller.signal. And fetch uses this to basically watch um, when we trigger an abort using our abort controller, it watches using the controller's signal. So remember with fetch, there's always uh, two promises that we need to wait for, for them to, uh, to finish up. So now we can say data and we are going to await the response being converted into JSON. So now that we have this, we can switch up just our little um, console messages so we can um, tell them apart from the Axios one. So cancel. Okay, and this is no longer response.data, it's just data. So for now, let's actually just get rid of this and we'll just be throwing the error so we can see what sort of error is thrown when it's caught. So this is the load data code here, but remember we also have the cleanup function that runs uh, from our effect. So this triggers again anytime the component is unmounted or say you were passing in a different URL, so it's going to clean up the previous effect and then rerun the new effect for the new URL. So what we can do here is instead of source.cancel, we've got our controller variable, which we set up here, and we can call the abort function on that. Okay, so I think we're good. So let's go over to the console. Okay, so it caught an error because um, if we look at the code here, so it's unmounting, and then this is the error that we threw that was caught. So if we open this error up, uh, it's a DOM exception. And the first thing we can do is try to get a little bit more information about the error. So we can uh, differentiate between like a, an error from the server, like a 500 error, versus um, the error that was triggered when we told uh, the controller to abort, which basically stops the fetch request from happening. So that's why we never saw this code run here. Uh, got response because it actually threw an exception and we caught that here. So let's actually console.log the error, just maybe to get some more details about that. So it's a DOM exception. And errors sometimes have uh, names and codes and stuff. Um, they also have messages, so we could look at what's the message of the error and maybe what's the name of the error. Okay, so the message is that the user aborted a request, and we can make sure that that's true by looking here at, I think it was number three that got cancelled. But we can see that its name is abort error. So we can actually use the name in our if statement that we'll add back in. So that instead of Axios is cancel error, which uh, we can't do in this case, we can say if error dot name is equal to abort, was that abort error? Okay. So now we're handling it correctly. When we catch an error, we're first going to check: does the error have a name that's abort error? If so, great. That's sort of our expected um, function. Um, the way we want to function. So we'll console.log just for fun that we caught the, um, you can say caught the abort in this case. Otherwise, we weren't prepared to handle this error. So we will just throw it and let someone higher up the uh, component tree catch that. Maybe you have an error boundary or something like that that's catching all the different errors from here. So if we refresh, we can see that the fetch cancel was on mounting and then it caught the abort, so there's no errors that are being displayed. We are canceling the request, and we're not getting any errors. Um, I can actually show you what would happen. So if I don't abort when it unmounts, this thing's going to just finish up. And what you'll see is actually... 
There we go. So this is what you would have got if you didn't uh, either cancel it or in some way handle trying to set state on an unmounted component. It says can't perform a React state update on an unmounted component. It indicates a memory leak. To fix, cancel all subscriptions and asynchronous tax tasks using the use effect cleanup function. So that's exactly what we're doing here in the use effect cleanup function. We are using the controller to abort the request, which throws an error because um, we are trying this, but it throws an error and we can handle the error um, so that we don't, uh, it's not a real error, it's something that we're expected so we can handle that. And uh, this code's working well now. So that's it for today. We just covered um, sort of three levels of dealing with uh, cleaning up an asynchronous task. The first is just, just a variable. We weren't actually canceling the HTTP request. We were just tracking with a variable so that we don't set state. We looked at how it's done in Axios actually in a previous video, so that's why we didn't cover this here. But then we redid the, that Axios code using fetch and looked at how to cancel a request in fetch. All right, that's it for today. Thanks, guys. Bye.